Here we go again. Surviving 200 days in Minecraft Pocket Edition. Since I died on day 93 of my first attempt, I have to start all over again from day number one. And this time, I have to do it on hard difficulty. Pocket Edition doesn't have a hardcore mode, so I will delete the game if I do end up dying during this challenge. This is gonna take me two weeks or 66 hours of gameplay to film, so all I ask from you guys is to leave a like on this video. Let's get 100,000 likes on this video. I've never achieved that in a short amount of time. And also, hit that subscribe button if you're new because we're on the road to 4 million subscribers. I wanna challenge myself, so I've set some goals that I wanna complete in these next 200 days in the game. A very nice survival base, tame a pet sheep, wolf, and iron golem, Full enchanted netherite armor, defeat the wither and the ender dragon, build a nether base, build multiple automated farms, as well as a blaze XP farm. I'm gonna try to use a different phone this time to see if it helps with the lag because I wanna get the best gameplay for you guys, so please watch the entire video. Day one, I immediately spawned right next to an abandoned village, grabbed the bed to make sure I could sleep through the night because we're playing on hard mode. I also grabbed a bunch of hay bales to make bread with. Turns out there was a dungeon and a stronghold underneath the village. I also nearly died, but the blacksmith made up for it. Three diamonds, that's actually insane. Pretty sure I could have crafted an enchanting table already. I traveled by boat towards the desert and went to sleep as soon as the moon came up. Day two, I found a desert village, killed my first iron golem, and did a lot of traveling on feet. Before I went to sleep, I found a pillager outpost. Day three to eight, I wasn't ready to fight, so I decided to find a cave to find diamonds and gear up. I spent the next five days mining because I kind of got a little carried away with the giant cave I was inside. Day 9. I found a village near the cave and decided to loot some stuff as well as begin smelting all the ores I found in the cave. I rushed to the pillager outpost to begin my fight. I let the iron golems go, but I was scared they would attack me. My bad omen and went to sleep. Day 10. As I was practicing the MLG water bucket on my phone, there was still one more pillager left that one of the iron golems helped me take care of. Then I continued on feet to find another villager where I can start my raid. Day 11 to 13. For some reason, these pillagers love hiding from me because it literally took me two days to complete my first raid in Minecraft Pocket Edition. The good thing is, I was able to get multiple totems of undying, but the trades from the hero effect weren't all that great though. Day 16 to 25, I finally made my first set of diamond armor and I was ready to explore the nether. I quickly built my nether portal and jumped right into the luckiest nether spawn ever. The bastion and nether fortress were right beside the portal spawn. This seed would be amazing for a speedrun. From the two stacks of gold I gathered from the Bastion, I only got two Ender Pearls from the trades. Talk about unlucky Bedrock Edition trade rates. Afterwards, 
I went to get blaze rods for eye of enders and potions. I nearly died multiple times in the nether, but was lucky enough to get out of there alive. Just like the first attempt. Day 26 to 45, you might be wondering why I nearly took 20 days to build a house, but hear me out, okay? There was a lot of trial and error since I wanted to take a more building route and a more roleplay route with this series, unlike the 100 day attempt. I wanted to build a house that I was really happy with and, you know, had a lot of intricate details with it. I want you guys to rate my house from 1 to 10 down below in the comments because I'm going to be reading the comments for sure. Then I started my little simple wheat farm. Day 46 to 50, the next 4 days I spent making a simple bridge that connected from my house to the village which was a very good idea because the smokers that were being used in the bridge actually attracted over some of the villagers. and. Uh, Well, I, I may have hit one of them because I was a little angry at the time because he was in the way. Day 51 to 65, I wanted to go mining for netherite so I quickly started a sheep farm. As soon as I got enough beds, I went straight into the nether and spent a great amount of time mining ancient debris and ended up with 22, which was enough for a set of armor and one tool. I also started a sugarcane farm so I could make books for the enchanting table and the bookshelves around it. Day 66 to 75, I went mining for a good amount of days looking for lapis to enchant my armor and I also got distracted by dungeons with name tags in the chest which means we can finally name the pets. When I got back, I instantly started enchanting my new set of diamond armor and mining a little more for extra experience. Day 76 to 85, while waiting for phantoms to spawn in, I tried breeding a librarian villager who gave out enchanting books, but failed. So I went out looking for drowns to make a riptide trident, but also failed to find any. I went to farm some ender pearls until I had enough for a complete end portal and I also got distracted for some time by diamonds. Again. I finally crafted my pet iron and named it Alphonse. Once the phantom spawned in, I got to work. I still needed nether wards to complete my slow falling potion recipe, but wasn't able to find any at the nether spawn fortress. I almost died a few times and wasted a lot of days searching for the nether wards. So from day 86 to 87, I found another nether fortress where I found nether wards almost instantly. And after exploring the fortress a little bit, it took me about another Minecraft day to get back to the nether portal. And let me just tell you guys, it was extremely stressful doing that on my phone. Day 88, I spent most of the day brewing the potions I needed for the ender dragon. The slow falling and strength potions and maxing out their duration. Day 89 to 90, I organized the chest just for the tools and items I needed for the ender dragon battle. I also took some time to continue my wheat and sheep farm. Day 91 to 95, I realized that my netherite armor didn't have the best enchantments and was almost broken, so I thought it would be more worth to go mining for a new set of netherite armor instead of repairing it because of how expensive netherite is. It took me a few days to get enough ancient debris for a new set of netherite armor.
Day 96 to 99, I went mining again because I needed more gold to craft the netherite ingots as well as get more experience to enchant the new set of diamond armor. I will say, I did get a little carried away. Day 100. Today was a big day and we are halfway done with the challenge. I finished enchanting my new set of diamond armor and crafting netherite armor and was ready to battle the ender dragon. I grabbed everything I needed from the chest I had prepared beforehand. Day 101. I ran back to the starting village because I remembered that there was a stronghold right underneath it. I will say though, I apologize for taking so long to get to the ender dragon fight because there were so many things out of my control to speed up the process. I also got three name tags from the dungeon before I entered the stronghold. Talk about luck. Anyway, enough of me talking, enjoy the ender dragon fight. As you guys can see, I went off with my bow skills on the pocket edition of Minecraft. As soon as I defeated the Ender Dragon, I got the Dragon Egg and decided not to go back to the overworld just yet. So from day 102 to 110, it was time for me to look for my first pair of elytra wings on Minecraft Pocket Edition. I spent almost 10 days in the end looking for an end city with a ship. I would have to say it paid off because out of the five end cities that I found, two of them had a ship with elytra wings in them.
I was so relieved to get back to my house after this big adventure, and I'm pretty sure I traveled over thousands of blocks for these wings. So from day 111 to 115, I didn't want to jump straight into another boss fight, so I decided to make an animal farm for my cows, but with a new design. It took me a few days to build this, only because I'm not used to the controls, and I don't want to see any comments bragging how good they are with the controls, because they only use their phone to play, okay? I'm not used to these controls. Day 116 to 120, I decided to start building my nether base because it's one of the goals I had for this 200 day survival challenge. I wanted to use stone bricks as the flooring and nether rack as walls, but I feel like the blocks blend in too much with the rest of the nether, so I'm definitely planning on changing these to nether brick later on, but for now, I'm gonna have to delay this project. Day 121 to 127, I wanted to begin collecting the wither schools to start preparing for the boss that ruined my first 100 day survival challenge. This took me about 5 to 6 days to collect 3 schools, but I did manage to get 4 in total before I went back to the overworld. I just want to say that the drop rates for these wither skeletons are trash. Day 128 to 130, I tamed my first horse and it turned out to be really fast. So I named her Sabrina and traveled for a thousand blocks to do some exploring, but the weather was really bad. What made it worse was when the horse decided to disappear with my name tag, saddle, and diamond horse armor. Day 131, I tamed my first pet wolf and built him the same doghouse for my day 100 challenge. I really hope he likes it. I also forgot to name him. So from day 132 to 150, I began my next big project by destroying my original wheat farm to build a new one with a windmill across the bridge from the house. This build took me a while to make because building on the phone was not very fun to me. It was also frustrating at times, but I had to push through. Some of you guys were telling me to use a controller, but trust me guys, I didn't grow up using a controller so it would have been worse. After nearly 18 days of straight collecting materials and building the wheat farm, I'm really glad with how it turned out. I want you guys to rate it down below in the comments. Day 151, I did a few touch-ups to the windmill as well as added a few interior additions to make it look more professional. Day 152, back to back, I wanted to work on another farm project so I began collecting materials for an automatic sugarcane farm. Day 153 to 155, this redstone farm was actually a much easier task than I thought it was going to be, and it turned out to be very efficient as well. Day 156, as I was crossing the bridge going towards my house, the weirdest thing happened to me. A lightning bolt struck onto my sheep farm and spawned in multiple skeleton horse jockeys. It was the strangest encounter I've ever had in Minecraft. After I finished dealing with them, I realized my pet sheep Kiwi was killed by that lightning bolt. I swear, Minecraft hates my pets. Day 157 to 165, I realized that getting nether brick would be so much harder than I thought it would be, so I decided to build a smaller nether room than I had planned. I'm still really happy with how the finished product looks, so let me know what you guys think down below. Day 166 to 170, I found a little cheat to kill the wither boss without even having to fight it by going to the end dimension. Make sure you guys check out his tutorial, I'll leave the link down below.
Anyway, everything was going well until somehow the Wither Boss was able to escape from the bedrock. There was no way I was going to beat the boss with the current gear I had because I was, I, I didn't think I was going to have to fight it. So I decided to make a run for it. I wasn't going to let the series end here. So on the way back, I encountered a pillager that gave me the bad omen effect. So from day 171 to 176, the next five days, I spent nothing but doing a raid and struggling to find some of the pillagers because they kept getting lost. But hey, I got lots of loot from the drops. Day 177 to 182, I had to finally make use of my elytra wings and the sugarcane farm, so I made some fireworks and said goodbye to my home. I found a poor village with a pillager outpost right next to it. The iron golem and I teamed up to take care of that problem. Day 183 to 190, after flying a thousand blocks, I found a snow biome with a village where I didn't find too much loot, but I wanted to explore before the video ended. It took so many days to get back to my house because my elytra wings decided to break on me, so I had to travel on boat and by feet. Talk about uncomfortable, I really wish I brought my extra pair of elytra wings, and not many people get to say that during these challenges. That was pretty cool how I found two. Day 191 to 194, when I got back to my village, I wanted to build an extra shop for flowers or anything to fill up the space in front of the windmill wheat farm area. I would say it turned out pretty nice and I was able to go for the look that I wanted. Day 195 to 199, I wanted to end this video off on a bang and since I didn't defeat the wither boss in the 100 day challenge, I was feeling guilty. So I geared up, grabbed some milk buckets, grabbed some golden apples, and just grabbed whatever I could and instantly ran back to the stronghold to defeat the wither boss. I definitely underestimated the wither even after what happened in the 100 day challenge. So as soon as I defeated the wither boss, I had also perished. I'm so sad this happened once again because I really wanted to continue this series, but as promised, I deleted the world. Please leave a like and subscribe to help this video reach the YouTube algorithm and get out to more people. So yeah, this was a very painful challenge and uh, well, never again.